All right, hello, and welcome back to another episode of the Chase Thomas Podcast, where I'm still the aforementioned Chase Thomas coming to you live from Knoxville, Tennessee, Everything School HQ, up there in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Old friend Jarrett Bailey is here. The helmets are here. Batman, Funko Pop, Halloween 2. The man is prepared. Batman, the killing joke. Like, you you got a good oh, setup. Yes. Jarrett Bailey, how are you? I'm um, fantastic. Uh, also, over... That shoulder is a, a Joey Harrington bobblehead for those wondering too, as well. Oh, Oregon yeah. legend, Oregon legend, Atlanta Joey Falcon Harrington. legend, Joey Harrington. That one, it, it's kind of hidden behind the Oilers helmet, but it's a Drew Bledsoe Bills bobblehead. So a okay. lot of a lot of goodies. But no, I'm doing I'm doing well, gents. It's good to see you. Good to see you too, my friend. Um, also here, longtime friend, recovering well from another fun weekend, Mister Evan Swords himself. Brian Harris up. Evan, good evening, sir. How are you? Oh, he just went mute. That, yes, that's good. You, you know, uh, oh, there he is. Uh, yeah, my snowball mic only goes so far, so I have to give a little tug. Uh, <laughs> I'm I'm good. You know, as all of oh, I feel like 60% of the times I'm on this podcast Monday, I'm like, I'm tired from the weekend, tired from the weekend. Mm-hmm. This time, a little more, a uh, little more tired from the weekend than normal. Well, that's good. You made it. You made it. What was your favorite uh, part of your trip to Scottsdale over the weekend? Oh, you know, a lot. I mean, the whole trip was incredible. I have. I used to live out there, so I have a bunch of friends uh, that are still out there. Mm-hmm. Um, my friend uh, Caitlin is like one of my best friends since elementary school, and she went to ASU. And one of the guys that I hung out with when I lived out there, she ended up moving back to Phoenix after she went home after college so we like did this i went back Hmm. to portland she went back to phoenix and she ended up meeting one of my friends there and now they're married and they just had twins oh wow and i couldn't be happier i'm like so happy that they're dating i they're my favorite couple and so my i you know i i have i have uh two uh twin nieces that i got to meet for the first time which was uh, really cool. I brought Milo down with me, my dog. Uh, we did a six-hour road trip because uh, I well, I don't trust putting your dog underneath a plane. Fair. Um, but yeah, it was you know it was exhausting coming back. Uh, we saw Dead Mouse at a uh, pool party. That was cool. Okay. Um, we yeah we were we were getting after it. It was a wait lot is of fun. Dead Mouse Dead Mouse Five? It, is that is it pronounced Dead Mouse? Yeah. Oh, I never knew that. I always said yeah. Dead Mouse Five. I just I didn't know it was Dead Mouse. I love you, Chase, so much. <laughs> I always have read that as Dead Mouse. Dead Mouse yeah. Five. Dead yeah. Mouse. Yeah. Never uh, knew that. I guess it is. It kind of. Never mind. I'm just gonna embarrass myself he, more. Never knew he's, that. Dead Mouse is just like he is a very online individual, and mm. I think back then they were using fives for S's and like passwords, whatever. Gotcha. Uh, but yeah, no, it was it was a great great show. Um, well, speaking of mouses, here in East Tennessee and here in uh, uh, in my neighborhood, my wife and I on our nightly walk when uh, we get home from work and everything uh, before we do this very program, uh, we saw a little mouse run by a neighbor's yard, and that mouse I don't think we'll see tomorrow because that street <laughs> is littered with cats, and we saw it and we're like, oh. This poor mouse has no idea what he's walking into. It's the hornet's nest here. So little Thunderdome. Yeah, he was he found his way to the Thunderdome. And I don't think it's gonna go well for him. But shout out to that mouse for the last time because it's just it's not looking good. Um speaking of not looking good, the Pittsburgh Steelers chances of winning the AFC North going into 2023. Jarrett. Oh, I had to do that transition. It was it was right there. I think that it was right there. You know, I don't know when I became the Steelers fan who was like raw rawing and like corralling everybody. Usually I'm the one who's like glass half empty. You're a very Steelers realistic Twitter. Steelers fan. Yeah, yeah. like usually very I'm like, oh, let's temper some expectations. Here, I'll throw some fun facts at you. Since NFL division realignment in 2002, no team has won the AFC North three seasons in a row. The Cincinnati Bengals hmm. have won the last two AFC North division titles. I don't think they're going to do it again. Um, not to say that I think that 
Pittsburgh is a better team than Cincinnati. They just have a much easier schedule than the Bengals, easier schedule than the Ravens as well. I think they're better coached than the Ravens. I think they have a much better defense than the Ravens. Um, and yeah, I, you guys know I do the game-by-game game predictions. I do two of them each year. One, the day of the schedule release, one right before uh, the kickoff of the season. And I have the Steelers winning the AFC North. And again, when when I do those, everybody's like, how do you have them as a better team than the Bengals? Uh, I think the Bengals are a better team, a bit better suited, better quarterback, all of that fun stuff. But I think there's something to be said for Mike Tomlin, who we I don't need to defend Mike Tomlin. He, he does it every year where we think, oh, OK, well, they're two and six. Here comes his first losing season. Nope, nine and eight. Eat it. And everything that they've done this offseason, they had a fantastic draft. They had some quietly good pickups in free agency. Like, yes, they lost Cameron Sutton, but they pick up Patrick Peterson and then they draft Joey Porter Jr., Corey Trice. Um, Levi Wallace is still there in the defensive backfield. And then offensively, they completely redid their offensive line, which looks so much better right now, at least on paper. We'll see it in action, obviously, in the preseason and then the regular season, but it looks so much better. And when you have that, uh, Najee Harris in the last month of the year started to look like a good running back, which is something that was inconsistent throughout his first year and a half as a starter. Jalen Warren, a really good two behind him. Pickens, Deontay Johnson, Pat Fryermuth, they bring in Darnell Washington. Like Everything about them, man. Um I love right now. And everybody's saying, oh, well, that, they've got Kenny Pickett. What, what if Kenny Pickett, like, he, what if he's not going to be an elite quarterback? I don't think he's going to be an elite quarterback. He doesn't need to be, though. If he's the 16th best quarterback in the NFL and everything else lives up to its potential, the Steelers are a playoff team. Have you already so, gotten to the point where he doesn't have top 10 potential eventually? You know, they got sent in. in yeah, the I think his ceiling is like tier three. So in that, like, mm. car, uh, maybe Ryan Tannehill a couple years ago, uh, if you want to throw Kirk in there, somewhere in that tier where mm. he's solid, but I don't think he's ever going to be the reason that you make it to the playoffs, the reason that you're a 10 win team. Um, mm. But if he just protects the ball, doesn't screw things up. So, I mean, we, I feel like we all have this conversation all the time about a certain number 10 that used to be in San Francisco. If he's <laughs> like a slightly more athletic Jimmy, I think there'll be a playoff team. So well, he didn't used to be in San Francisco. He's well on his way to making his way back because look, the <laughs> thing time is a flat circle and watch the- your mouth. <laughs> I will not I will not do it. I can't. I'm tired. Do you want to do 40 minutes on Brock Purdy versus Trey Lance? I I would I, rather I, slam my tongue in a car door than hear either of those two names for like I, until September. I I until literally until week one, I would just be very comfortable not mentioning the name of any San Francisco 49er quarterback in the history. Like I'm telling you, Nate Davis, I don't even want to hear it. I don't (laughs) want to hear JT O'Sullivan. I don't want to hear Tim No, no, Mm. especially not Tim Rattay. Uh, I'm so tired. Apparently, Jack Cohn making his way to the 49ers because why not? Right. He feels Mm. like a XFL (laughs) XFL legend. Yeah, yeah, well, we need every quarterback under the sun. No, I, uh, I just, yeah, I just don't care. I just am so over it. Well, we don't have to talk about that. We can, Jarrett's optimistic and he has the Steelers as the AFC North. Can winner. I, can I, I, I say something about that though? Cause I, I understand like where you're at from a realistic standpoint, but like Mike Tomlin won two Super Bowls. Won one. He made it to two. Made it to two, excuse me. Um, made it to two Super Bowls. Uh, Ben Roethlisberger is considered to be one of the greatest, you know, probably the top 50 greatest quarterbacks of all time. Um, are we just accepting that like it was a Ben and Mike situation? Is that what it is? I mean, because how do I land my plane here? Your quarterback sucks, and I don't think that. I don't think the Steelers maybe making the playoffs is like good enough. Like, I feel like they're like, we've just, I mean, like, are we, are we, is that like the Steelers goal every now, every, now every year is just like for Mike Tomlin to make, you know, uh, a winning season. Like, I see what you're trying to they, say. Haven't they had long enough to rebuild? I, I see what you're trying to say. The thing is with the Steelers is like, they haven't rebuilt. Like they've had, so there was like a period from like 2014 to 20, like 18, where the defense was putrid. They didn't rebuild anything because Ben, Le'Veon Bell, Antonio Brown were scoring 30 points a game and they were winning the division regardless. Right. Um, 
I see what you're trying to say though about like is the expectations like too low? Is it like too low for the students? Is that what you're trying to say? Well, well, I definitely think it's too low, but I mean, okay. I I feel like we're like slowly delving into like we're just acceptance. Like I I don't know, maybe I you know I, I think with different elements come different expectations. So last year, I mean. A lot of people weren't expecting the Steelers to make the playoffs, myself included, because of, okay, the offensive line's bad. The quarterback's going to be a rookie or Mitch Trubisky. Like, we expected this to be a transitional year, and it was somewhat of that. They started off the first half of the season really bad. They finished it off really strong. Now it's, all right, how big of a leap can Kenny Pickett take? Where is he going to kind of fit in with, you know, the rest of the quarterbacks in in the NFL? So for me, like I'm not expecting a Super Bowl this year just because, like, this isn't Ben Roethlisberger. Like even like year two, Ben Roethlisberger, when they did go to the Super Bowl and win it, they had like obviously Ben was a ginormous part of that, and they don't win it without him. But I think the defense back then was better than what it is now. They had a better offensive line than what they do have now. That was a different game than it was then too. I mean, twenty years ago, it's you know a lot of things have changed. So I think right now they're goals should be all right let's just get this very very young team some playoff experience maybe surprise some people in the wild card and win a playoff game and continue this forward because again another contrast to the Steelers of you know a young Ben Roethlisberger is that was a very veteran team it was okay James Farrier it was um uh, guys in the in the defensive back like Aaron Smith had been there for a while. Larry Foote had been there for a while. Joey Porter had been there for a while. The offensive line was all a bunch of really good future Hall of Fame veterans. Heinz Ward Burris, like they were all veteran guys. This is not that. Like the quarterback's young, but so is the rest of the roster. So it's it's one of those things where when you're building with a young team, you're all growing together. It's not, all right, we've got a bunch of vets and a, and a rookie quarterback. Let's just rally around him and do all we can to take care of him. No, they're all learning together. Um, so... I think, like I said, with different elements come different expectations. I think once if they get into the playoffs, that is a big, big win for this very young team. And if they surprise everybody, maybe win a playoff game, that's huge. Um, as of right now, in my first like game by game thing, I have them facing the Bengals. I think they would lose in the playoffs. Mm. So, you know, it would be one of those things where they would host a playoff game, which would be be really cool. I'm sure that they would keep it close, but it I'm very intrigued by the season. And this is like the most excited I've been for a season in a hot minute. So I'm, I just want to see. We're on the what, same page, Jared. Like, like Evan's over here just dealing with a perennial contender year over year. It doesn't even matter who's at quarterback. And then we're over here just but, fighting for our life. You're talking about hosting a playoff game. I'm right there with you. Guess, Jared, I have a trivia question for you. I'm not even in the oh. trivia bowl, but I have one for you. How... Okay. Many times has the have the Atlanta Falcons played a home playoff game since the Mercedes Benz new stadium has been opened. When did that stadium open? Can't tell you that. You gotta you gotta guess. Isn't Uh, isn't that a trick question? I know that they hosted one against Green Bay because they absolutely murdered. They did. Um, who are the other playoff games? Okay, they played the Niners there at home. Kaepernick had a really good game in that one. They played the 49ers at home in the playoffs. They did. Pick at the stick. (laughs) I have zero recollection of that happening. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. It was the year the Niners was the Super Bowl, I think. Yeah. It was what, 2011? Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. It's a great game. Okay. So that tells me how, (laughs) that gives me at least a time frame of how long. So that's at least. So how many have they won or how many have they hosted? How many have they hosted since it's. Okay. Well, that's at least two. No, that's the dome. Those are both the Georgia Dome, not Mercedes. Those are, those are the, okay, then they haven't. Yes, that's correct. They have yeah, never so hosted a home playoff game in their new venue. And it is. Can I, I say something about that stadium? stadium? Beautiful and, stadium, by the way. It looks horrible on TV. Like mm, the interior. I hate it. I hate the way the grass looks or the, tur- the turf. I was going to say, it's cool. definitely not grass. It is some fake, yeah. fake turf. Yeah. Don't like the way it looks. Too too bright. The only thing that I want to say, and the reason why I want to, want to wrap this up with what, what I was talking about is. I've been watching my team have a fantastic roster and and not win the big game for so long. So I just like I I hear you sit here talk about Kenny Pickett like that and like I just want to save you the trouble, dude. I just want to like just let you know, you're never. It's never going to be enough. Like Kenny Pickett's mm. not going to be enough. And I only tell you that because I have just I've gone through it. I've watched five quarterbacks, maybe like fifteen at once. It depends on how many you <laughs> use, like Voltron, add pieces together. It's just not going to be enough. Yeah, and 
the thing that I always tell people in today's NFL when they try arguing like, okay, well, he's not an elite quarterback, but okay, you don't need an elite quarterback necessarily to win a Super Bowl, but the but is you better be perfect everywhere else. That means you better have a top three defense. You better have a top three offensive line. You better have a top three, you know, skill guys around him. You got to be perfect everywhere else. Thing with San Francisco is they mostly have been, and they've gotten close. Like one overthrow is thrown a little bit closer, and it's a I touchdown. Pro- I and promise we'll you, it doesn't count. Oh, hey, I, I, I get it. I hear what you're saying. You need to either be Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, or have your your silly little special quarterbacks, Joe Flacco and uh, Eli Manning, just go Super <laughs> Saiyan in the playoffs, and that's that's basically how you get it done. Yeah, I was going to say, every once in a while you get like these weird exceptions. Um, and I, I don't even like the, like the, oh, the Trent Dilfer and the Brad Johnson. Again, I, it's, it was a different game back then. But in the last decade or so, yeah, we've had a Flacco have just a crazy postseason. We've had Eli Nick have Foles. Nick Foles kind of ride a magic carpet with a dummy down offense from, from Doug Peterson. By the way, I love Doug Peterson. I know that wasn't really part of the, uh, the, the layout, but I'm so excited for the Jacksonville Jaguars this season. Oh, I can't wait. Mm. I think they're gonna be good. They're gonna be the favorite again. And it's they're gonna just, be fun. They are gonna be fun. Um, and, one through four though, AFC North right now. So if you have Steelers one, do you have? And then how many playoff teams do you have getting in from this division? So initially, I had two. I have a feeling though, when I do my second game by game, it's gonna be three, just because mm. like I was really teetering on the Ravens or the Chargers, but the Ravens have proven it to me that they get in. The Chargers haven't, so I'm probably gonna switch those. So Steelers, Bengals, Ravens, Browns. I think probably three playoff teams. It'll be Steelers at the four, Bengals at the five, Ravens at the six or seven, depending on what happens with the Jets. Interesting. Right now, I probably have Ravens one. I think Monken's going to be really fun for them. I think Lamar's going to be Dude, I think that the top three, you could put them in just about any order, and I wouldn't argue with you too much. 100%. I mean, it's a big wild card right now. Realistically speaking, there's like... There's there... No one should be surprised when, when you get... When it gets announced that the AFC North you know, playoff picture is set, but at the same time, like no one should be able to be like, yeah, I knew it all along. Anybody yeah. was like, Oh, I knew, I knew the whole time. No, you <laughs> didn't. Absolutely not. It's going to be a bloodbath of a division. Yeah. Like yeah. I'll, oh, yeah, I'll predict whatever I'm going to predict, but like, I, I'm not going to be surprised if it goes one of a billion different ways. And like, I say that Cleveland's going to be the four, but if Watson looks like, you know, 2019 Watson, then the Browns are going to be right in there too. But they have to. That's why there's this other like looming cloud where you the guaranteed contract. And look, um, uh, I cannot say I will be um, upset to see it not going. No, I don't think anybody outside of Cleveland will be upset if things just if stuff just hits the fan. Yeah, I'm I'm not, you know, what's the word I'm looking for? I'm not too big to admit that I wouldn't be too ashamed of that either. Yeah, but it's definitely possible. I mean, they just got Elijah Moore, Donovan Peoples Jones and Watson. I forgot about Elijah three. Moore being a Brown. Yeah. Out. I completely yeah. forgot about that. And like Amari Cooper is going to be the number one on that offense, but like Peoples Jones and Watson were building chemistry in the last month of the season. If you go back and watch that Washington game, they were, they were starting to click very much. So, and Nick so, Chubb's still there and they Nick have one Chubb's of the best offensive there, lines in know. football. Like there's it, a path. There is definitely a path and they're going to be playing a fourth place schedule. So yeah. it's, it's that's why it's I think the AFC North is just going to be so much fun. Cause you think you could really make the case for all four teams to win the division. Yeah. And uh, we, the thing with me though, is that we said the same thing about the AFC West last year and mm. two of those four teams were tire fires. So we'll, we'll see. Evan, why or why not? Mike McCarthy will be the first NFL coach fired this season. Oh man, fired? No, I don't think he'll be the first fired. He should be. He sucks. Um, but if there's anything we know, he's on the team that does take a very long time to uh, get rid of their co- their coaches. Um, <laughs> they love their interim, and Dan Quinn stuck around. He's pulled his name out of big jobs. Like they have their in-house replacement. He is. That like, tells me something that he. Right? Jerry Jones is like, look, if if Mike isn't the guy, he will be. And I was like, all right, I'll stay. Mm-hmm. Off, that's a really good impression. I very, very, very much I'm, enjoyed that. I'm very good at this Evans words. Don't worry. Yeah. There you go. Uh, um, yeah. Thank you for also getting my last name right. Very, 
I did see that clip with JP and it made me laugh really hard. <laughs> uh, By the way, JP Acosta, one of my favorite people, tremendous talent. I know. Yeah. I, I, I feel like you guys like might as well have graduated from like the same school of like what, whatever, <laughs> like you're bo both fantastic. Um, yeah, I, I just, uh, I can't wait to see Mike McCarthy, uh, let go, but I don't think it happens because realistically he just kind of exists. He's like a lawn gnome in your front yard. <laughs> it's there and it's taking up space, but realistically speaking, you can get, you know, you can exist in life with, without like even acknowledging it. I'm like trying to run through the coaches in my head to see who could be, um, McCarthy, you know, like I see the argument for McCarthy. Like if they're like three and six, uh, I think he's gone. I I, I will say this. Good. I think this might be one of those seasons where we don't see a head coach fired for a while. Hmm. Everybody is just kind of in this weird space where they're like, right. "All right, it's too early to fire him," or "All right, we've got a rookie quarterback," or going into a second year quarterback like Chicago with Eberflus. Like, exactly. all right, we'll see. We'll see. It, you know, we've got to give him at least a year. It, it's gonna be. It's gonna be interesting. Might be the first coach fired. Eberflus? No, Gannon. No. Cardinals. They're intent, like, look, they, Kyler Murray is probably not playing a snap for them this year. They cut And he's DeAndre. getting traded in the offseason after they go 2-15. and 15. Yeah, I think I'm they're trying. I'm just saying, he could be a, t he could be a Jim Tom Sula. I think, that he's gonna be a, I think that he's going to be a one and done. I, I will Do tell you, you this. That. I, saw that. That. I saw that man talk to players. There's <laughs> no way he will get buy-in. And it, and it already sounds like that was the case in, in Philadelphia. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm not saying that it's going to be a fast firing. Yeah, it might be like week 16, but I, mm. I don't know that if I don't know if coaches are going to be you know getting cut left and right this season. Well, you know what's interesting when you look at the Cowboys schedule that in year like it's very back heavy like it's the, the front part of this is pretty nice like you go to new york like they'll probably be favored there it's a night it's prime time you get the jets at home like that new york is not an easy no but uh, like the cowboys should be better than the giants next year they should be better um, i don't know man Shout I have out. zero faith in the giants by the way i'm kind of on yeah faith here. i think the giants I'm, I'm just i just like hey shout out to the big apple <laughs> head coach uh you know what Shout I mean? out to the big apple but it's also when you look at that because he is brian dabble is good he, he's a good coach it's just he's daniel jones coach. has been paid now and i'm not uh a long giving 40 daniel million dollars a year to daniel jones is the dumbest thing anybody did this offseason by the way yeah he uh i'm i'm not a long-term believer there i, I don't Let, think allow me to, to plug something just real yes. quick because i so i did a piece on usa today comparing all 32 quarterbacks to non-football things uh, which everybody seemed to like, by the way, and that made me heart really happy. But I compared Daniel Jones to a ham sandwich. Like, yeah, if you're hungry, you'll eat it. It's there. It'll get you through the day. You would much rather have like a three course meal. We'd rather have a steak if mm. you can get it. He's you're, you're eating the ham sandwich because you're in a hurry. There's not a lot of options, and you don't have time. Ham's the worst deli meat, right? Yeah, yeah. It's, oh yeah. It's, dude, I'm 100%. very picky about deli meat. Like turkey, ham, they're all so wet. No, turkey's not wet. Turkey's fine. Turkey's dry. That's yeah. Turkey's turkey, good. Bro. All the turkey lunch meat I get eventually gets wet. Well, that I mean, there's a, you, there you is a little. That out. There's oh. a little more. Yeah. All right. I'll I'll, I'll stash that away for yeah. If it's reference. a little like you're you're eating the wrong turkey here, Jared. I'm a little concerned about your turkey intake now, based on this I, take. I here. get chicken lunch meat is is I think salami is the top of the uh, the lunch meat food chain. Well, mm. salami, pastrami, roast beef. Those are my big three, and then you can uh, throw. I can't do pastrami. You know, like just deli meat. meats. That's just, that's yeah. those are deli meats. Deli meats are yeah. solid. Put corned beef on Ugh. to make sure to make the the Mount Rushmore of of deli meat. I don't think I've had corned beef in like. Over I just had an Arby Reuben you know. like two weeks ago, so I'm I'm fresh off the uh, the corned beef. There you go. I love it that all this spinning. Daniel from, Jones, uh, just Daniel Jones. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say <laughs> Daniel Jones. Well, like when you look at the McCarthy thing to bring it back, like I just look at around the league and I think y'all's point about like a lot of guys aren't going to get fired because I think there's another part of this, right? When you look at the league and like look at who might be bad. The Titans, I think, are actually going to be pretty truly awful. I think the bottom falls out. But Mike the Vrabel's got a lot of power there. Is that Vrabel's going to raise that floor? Like on paper, they're a four win team. He's a good enough coach. Where I, th yeah. Yeah. I don't think so. They're, the yeah. offensive line got worse. And you no, might have the, to play Will Levis back there if Tannehill's like I. I think this. Uh, is I want to see that, dude. I, it's like I want to see that train wreck so badly. 
Mm-hmm. This is going to happen. They're going to play bad. Will Levis is going to come out and they're going to give him like a Desmond Ritter year, right? Where it's like, listen, we weren't expecting you to come out and play. And we certainly don't expect you to make this team better right now. We'll wait till next season. But Which is exactly just... why they should have just moved all of the assets that they have to gain draft picks. Like, why are you holding on to Derrick Henry? You're not winning anything with him. This was the probably the last year you were going to be able to get anything for him. Same thing with Tannehill. You could have just cut ties and mm-hmm. just said, you know what? We're going to suck this year. Fans get excited for 2024. We They draft Will Levis, which is also dumb. Like, if they would have just said, yeah, we're going to probably stink. We'll start Malik Willis for the year, God willing, and see what happens. I, I just don't get it, man. I think that they're trying to convince themselves that they were just like a couple moves away. They're not. They're not. No, they have the worst wide receiver room in the NFL. Like, full stop. It's Traylon Burks, Nick Westbrook, Nakina, and then me, you, and Swords. Yes. It's terrible. I, like, I'm not kidding when I say the Titans are my pick to have the worst record in the NFL this year. I think the bottom falls. You don't be that bad. I, I think- would be so happy. I want so badly the Cardinals to not get that pick. Yeah, I can't. Well, we also have, have the Texans pick. So well, let's also yeah. let's also agree that as long as it's not the Raiders, everybody's happy because I don't want Caleb Williams going to that cesspool. By the way, and I I touched on this on another show. If I'm Caleb Williams, I'm Eli Manning, both the Raiders and the Cardinals. If they finish one and two, I'm saying, mm-hmm. all right, one of you trade it. I'm not going to any of your cesspools <laughs> and ruining my career. So either you you can keep the picks, but I'm not going to play for you. So if you draft me, it's a wasted pick. So either trade it and I'll go somewhere else or, you know, I'll, I'll go to whomever picks at three. Hmm. I, uh, I don't know. I just, uh, but like Vrabel is not going to get fired. Like Vrabel has a lot of power there. So. No, you look at the fact that they fired Robinson last year. No, I don't think so. Right. Like, so I'm looking around at different spots where I'm like, okay, Sean Payton, even if Brown stink, Sean Payton's not going anywhere. Um, you so look at, maybe? yeah, Belichick. Like the, that's the fun one. It's oh, like, come okay. on, Chase. Like, <laughs> what do you what if the bottom falls out in New England? Like what if they're four and th- I mean is it a forced retirement? Like we're nearing I was gonna the say, end. Would, they pass it as like Bill Belichick is retiring from the New England Patriots. Yeah. Where behind the scenes, like Bill either you retire or I'm finding somebody else. But like the Texans could be really bad. Guess what? They're not firing to make a Ryan. Wait, hold on, not hold on three years in a hold row. Hold on. What if mm. Bill Belichick says in, in my contract? And then he goes and uh, coaches the Raiders, where Tom Brady's the owner. Would Bill Belichick want to go there, though? <laughs> I wouldn't. He's a vineyard guy. He loves the Cape. It seems like he he's a Northeasterner now. I don't think he makes the jump. I think when Belichick is done, done, I think he just is in yeah, the vineyard. He's, and he's just what, like 71 now? I think yeah. the time is coming very close for him to be done. And look, whatever happens from this point out, it doesn't touch his legacy. Like Don Shula had a couple of bad seasons on his way out and no one thinks of Don Shula any differently. God rest I love how we talk about Belichick too, or it's like, it's time. And Pete Carroll's like two years older than him. Pete Carroll. Yeah, Pete Carroll's still winning do. games. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's just Maybe one of those things. Off. Pete Carroll doesn't feel like the oldest coach in football. Like the man, Maybe gum is the secret elixir to life that we never we never knew. The chewing gum that was a was a big part of this. I started right? chewing like mm-hmm. big wads of gum just to try to like get a more refined jawline recently. I don't okay. know if it's gonna yeah. work, but we'll see. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Circle back with us in a couple of months, Jared. Yeah. Let us know. Um the best landing spot for DeAndre Hopkins is where, Evan? Uh, I think you've come to notice that it's wherever that they will pay him because mm. my guy is not getting options. When they said that he might go be down to go to Cleveland, that's when you knew it's not looking good. But they don't even have a fit for him. He wouldn't start in Cleveland, right? That's. But it, I just think it was the the, I think the he Sean Watson start. connection. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously him and Watson already have a built-in chemistry. I think it would be Cooper and D-Hop and then more in the slot. That's what I'm um, saying. So is People Jones going down? People they... Jones. Well, I mean, depending on what would happen, I mean, maybe Elijah Moore is the fourth, but they're going to yeah. run enough where they're going to have a balanced enough offense where everybody's going to get their get their touches. So um, best mm-hmm. fit, though, I mean, I've said Buffalo. It, it's felt like an inevitability that we're just kind of waiting for. I don't know. Well, we'll you think sport. the Bills are the inevitability for I thought for the longest time I thought so. But mm. I mean they did make a really good move today signing Leonard Floyd, which is something they needed to do because their edge rushers were bad. They're not good. 
Um, Which is not good and also kind of weird because they've spent a lot of draft capital in recent years. Um, yeah, and not like fine. Greg Rousseau is probably the best one there. And even then, like he's just a dude. Like AJ Epinesa hasn't panned out yeah. to anything. They just paid Ed Oliver too, though. Which I didn't like. Like Ed <laughs> Oliver, good good for him, man. He's a dude. He hasn't made mm. one Pro Bowl. He's just been a dude. Giving that much money to a dude, don't like it. Yeah. But it's funny we're talking about all these dudes and it's like they were just game wreckers, all of them in college. Like they were all yeah. just these super college defensive linemen and just like in the moment you're like, this makes sense. And it's the Bells. They get the benefit of the doubt. Actually, just... like Ed Oliver is an, a, like an, an above average starting interior defensive lineman, but he's not mm-hmm. worth the money that they gave him. I just, I don't know where the best, I mean, the Patriots make a lot of sense actually for De, uh, DeAndre Hopkins. I think they sneaky need to do something more with that wide receiver room, but they yeah, never need. If, if you're DeAndre Hopkins though, do you want to go play with Mac Jones slash no. Bailey Zapp slash Trace McSorley? Yeah. I want Trace McSorley to start a game this year. That is my, I, if, I don't know if there's a sports book that has that, that like over under starts for Trace McSorley in New England this year. Oh, I want to, I want to hit the over. I mean, he's behind. Uh, he's like, he's what third? Is he's he even gonna make? Third. Yeah. Okay. Like, yeah. I, I don't know. I have my doubts on McSorley. Just so but... we can all play that fun Trace McSorley song from when he was at Penn State. <sighs> Penn State has the same kind of quarterback over and over again. Outside of Drew Aller this year, maybe Drew Aller is a very different that. kind of guy. But Sean Clifford, Trace McSorley, Michael Robinson. You go through these dudes, and it's just like the gamers who just don't really have a ceiling, who don't really have an NFL body frame arm but they win michael a robinson lot of was a games. pro bowl fullback though huh michael robinson was a pro bowl fullback though he was people i wonder how many people realize that that man was a very good college quarterback he was a tri- won an orange bowl yeah he was good uh no but they've they've just had so many guys like that where you're just like they're great college guys but they're not gonna pan out in the nfl who was the last great nfl quarterback from penn state have they had one I don't know if they've really had one. Like they've had some guy like Kerry Collins with the Penn State. Um, okay, it has to be Kerry Collins, right? Like, I don't think there's anybody else. I I mean, Kerry, been, like, how many? What did they? What did Kerry Collins? How many wins did he have in Tennessee? 13, I mean, that man went to the Super Bowl yeah. with the New York Giants, sir. He was a, he was a Super Bowl quarterback. Starter for the Giants. Mm-hmm. What he did with the Titans, the Titans was crazy. They got the one seed that year. 08, 13 and three. Then they lost hmm. to Joe Flacco in the divisional round. Yeah, man. Bastard. Um, that's wild. I uh. I don't know Infamous, why that is. Then you have Marino, a bit, Kenny Pickett, and Pitt. Like Pitt has these guys, and then for whatever reason, Penn State doesn't. Um, what is realistic for the Raiders? You talked about the Raiders a little bit, Jared. If Jimmy's foot is not okay, because I don't think Brady's happening. Like I think we can just go ahead and cancel that one out. I don't think Brady is going to be the starting quarterback for the Las Vegas Raiders at any point this year. That being said, it's a lot of pressure for Aiden O'Connell, and it's also kind of weird. Like, why was Jared Stidham not? sticking around here if right. this was all up in the air like it's all a very weird process right now in las vegas and they have no risk here with jimmy garoppolo at this point based on what mike florio saw going through that contract like i don't know what to expect from vegas going into this fall and are you extremely concerned about who's going to be under center week one i think regardless of who's going to be under center they're going to be horrible mm. like, this is just in the past two decades, the Raiders have been an endless cesspool of mediocrity, damnation, and stupidity. Like they are one bad move after the other. Mm. And the quarterback move to begin with, it's at best a lateral move. At worst, they got worse at quarterback. I understand the chemistry between, you know, he, McDaniels and Jimmy or whatever from New England. But name me, if you can, I'll spot you Chandler Jones and I will spot you Max Crosby. Name me three Raiders defenders. Don't think he can. I'll, I'll uh, give you I'll Nate give Hobbs. You a, is Nate Hobbs still a Nate Hobbs is still a Raider? That's one. Uh, hold on. Let me think here for a second. Um, who do they? Oh well, Tyree Wilson, right? Okay, that's two. He was just drafted. Uh, uh let me let me do you one better. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> Divine Diablo is another one. If you were looking for one, there, Chase. Oh, uh, um, weak side linebacker. Okay. My point being that yeah. the roster is too horrible. They're poorly coached. Josh McDaniels isn't an NFL head coach. Like I like some of the guys that they have. I think Michael Mayer could be really good, but like the offensive line is still crap. It looks like they could trade Hunter Renfro too, by the way. 
Which and I would love. The Falcons really need Hunter Renfro. They really need a third down uh, receiver uh, safety blanket. And from Devontae Adams, like there's a reason that he's being like, yeah, I don't like the direction this is going. He's yeah. I give it till week six until the Raiders are one and five. He gets overthrown again by Jimmy Garoppolo, and then he just takes off his helmet and leaves. Like there is, if I'm Devontae Adams, I'm I'm not getting any younger. I only have so many seasons left of being like a top tier guy. I want to go somewhere where I can win, and Vegas is certainly not it. Man, yeah, I think they're they're a sneaky good bet for like worse record. Like you could see I how it gets bad. bad, and part of it it's not even McDaniel's and this administration's fault. We should give Ziegler and them this benefit of the doubt in that the Mayock Gruden era, which is how many dudes who did not stick around the Conleys, the Keelan Farrells. Like you just go up and down this list where it's like horrific stretches of drafts where it's just going to take time to come back from like, it's just some of it's really just not their fault. How they made Derek Carr, the scapegoat and all of this is mm. horrible. Like, oh, that, sucks. Th- Derek Carr does not suck. He Derek sucks. Carr is a top 12 quarterback in the NFL. Mm. Derek Carr sucks. He's a top 12 quarterback. Do you think he's going to be a top 12 quarterback this year? Oh, um, oh uh, yeah. I'll I bet mean, you he, any. Of, definitely. You, you wanna, yeah. Because you, you, you want to eat another shirt dog. <laughs> Well, how are we determining a top 12 quarterback? Because like when I did my quarterback rankings, I think I had him at 10 or 11. What do you think? QBR? Like, I don't know. Like passer rating, maybe, I guess. I okay. don't know. Yeah. If you want to say that Derek Carr will finish top 12. Well, I don't like passer rating, though. I think that's because, a pretty good measure. Because you though. can be on a bad team and just be throwing the oh, ball. Yeah, you know what? I'll give you that because Andy Dalton had a higher passer rating last year. Um, What is it? QBR? What is the QBR could be a good one. DVOA. DVOA, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. DVOA. If the Saints have a top 10 offensive DVOA this year, I will. Uh, I need to think about this because I, that is one I would gobble up right now as not happening under any circumstances. Oh, by the way, I'm I'm with you. I think that, that going to New I'm Orleans texting Alvin. Work, my lo, my friend, the worst thing good he could see friend Alvin Kamara right now. You are not playing football <laughs> for this uh, New Orleans Saints this year, sir. Car going to New Orleans, I think, was a dumb move. Because mm. the Saints are another one of those teams similar to Tennessee. We're like, oh, man, we're only one move away. No, you're not. Okay? Mm. Your defense is old. It got buffered by playing a lot of bad teams last year. And, like, outside of Chris Olave, what do you have? Oh, we got Michael Thomas. Uh, Michael Thomas hasn't been good since 2018. I, I, I don't care that Michael Thomas is still there. I don't. And, like, I look at, like, if you said, okay, you can pick Atlanta's roster or the Saints roster. I'm taking Atlanta's all day. The roster is so much better on both sides of the ball. I like Derek Irish Carr. Language. I, I, I like Derek Carr, uh, but I the, plus they have a horrible head coach. I think Dennis Allen is in consideration for the worst head coach in the NFL. So it's uh, they have the quarterback, but if you, you if you have three th- one or one or two of these three things, I think two of these three things are a playoff team: a good head coach, a good quarterback, and a good defense. You're throwing a good offensive line there too. If you've got Three of those four, you're a guaranteed playoff team. If you're two two out of four, you're in the hunt. One out of four, we'll talk about you. Zero out of four. I think they've got a solid defense, but it's getting older. A solid quarterback, a crap head, co- head coach, offensive line that's kind of up in the eye. They have a benefit of playing in a bad division, but I don't think that they're going to be anything special. I wish Derek Carr would have gone somewhere else. Mm. Jared Bailey, what can the good folks check out from you across the internet this week? Um, so I started a new thing on my YouTube called watch the tape. Um, we, well, that we, I, uh, take a player. I'll probably do one or two of these a week. Uh, I find some, uh, watch all 22 film, take, find some plays throughout the season that I really liked, explain why I liked it. It's not like a football jargon, deep show, like no disrespect to anybody who is a very big football jargon podcast type thing. I just feel like most casual football fans don't care about hearing that in-depth football jargon talk. Like, oh, wow, watch how he runs this squiggly, whatever the hell, X, Y, Z. I don't do that. I say, hey, this is what the defense is doing. This is why I like the play call. Isn't this football player great? Here's a 10-minute video on why. I did Josh Allen delete it off. If you're a Bills fan, please go watch that. Um, And yeah, all the other stuff from USA Today. I just did another one. 32 potential breakout stars, one player from each team that could break out this season. Go read that on USA Today. You can read that quarterback piece that's on USA Today as well. It's very fun and very goofy. Uh, You can see who I compared uh, Desmond Ritter to, Chase Thomas. That would be lots of fun. Old Trevor Lawrence? No, no. That's not who I compared him to. Um, Mm. Alex Smith? I think you'll like the comparison. No, it's a non-football comparison. Oh. I think you'll like it. It's it's more of a satirical, goofy piece, but people seem to really enjoy it. So, so yeah, Yeah. that's 
for YouTube. The Pump Fake Podcast, as always, Mike K from the Charlotte Observer, joining me on the latest episode talking the NFC South. Oh, would you look at that? It came full circle. We're talking NFC South right now. So yeah, go listen to all the of Falcons that. Are the favorites. The Falcons are the favorites right now. They yes. certainly are. I'm leaning nice. to. I'm leaning toward them, Chase Thomas. It's, it's just, about time. Can I get on the Desmond Ritter bandwagon? And the answer is, I probably not. But I love the roster. I was gonna say, here's the best part. You don't have to because don't Arthur Smith be. is gonna don't take all out of his hands. He is throwing 17 times a game, and <laughs> that is all that man is doing. Just don't. My boy Miles Garrett game. has talked to me heavily about the Falcons this offseason. He's like, yeah, they're gonna be good, man. I'm like, all right, buddy, we'll, we'll see. Bijan, like, I just, I can't wait to just like be emotionally because the last two years, like, you know, it's about rebuild and they've He's been fantastic. just floating at 500, so overachieving. Good. I haven't had like those Sunday afternoons that Evans had for the last seven where it's just like our team's in it and it's just fun. It's win, win or die. And I'm just emotionally exhausted every week. Um, I'm going to have that again this fall because I think the Falcons should host a playoff game. They should be a playoff team next year. And like, I get to see Bijan Robinson line up in the slot on third down Cordell Patterson and Tyler Algier in the backfield with Desmond Renner in the gun. That's I something pray. I get to see. Just, I, I hope pray. that Arthur Smith lines up a wing tee just once. I, just I would love that. I pray to God that you have to watch Josh Johnson quarterback for your football team this year in a meaningful playoff game so you know <laughs> how great it is to be a 49ers fan. It's fantastic, Evan. I see you every Sunday. You've gotten more wins than losses. You've got What two- about the last Sunday of the season that they play? It's not about the it's not about the end. It's about it's the journey. About it's about the journey. journey. It's about the friends we make along the way. Yes. Yeah, well, you know, you know, if you were a 49ers fan just built, you know, born a decade before me, mm. you would have got to see five Super Bowl wins. Yeah. I have seen on the bright side saying that NFC title games are just as good. If something does go south, Chase, with Desmond Ritter, you got Taylor Heineke there who among the top backups in the NFL. Yeah. From Atlanta, went to Collins Hill, rival high school of mine. All he does so is came back home. Yeah. I didn't know that. That's yeah. a fun little nugget. Collins Hill Eagle legend, Taylor Heineke. Um, it's also if you're Desmond Ritter, you have to be a little bit nervous because that man finds his way into the field no matter what. Who's that quarterback? Like it's just there is it's just not good for it's not a good vibe to just have Taylor Heineke looming over your shoulder as a backup quarterback. It's a it's a little concerning. Um, Evan Swords, Jared Bailey, thank you as always. Jared, don't be a stranger. We'll have you back on again soon. Evan, thank you as always, my friend, and I will talk to you all very soon. Cheers, boys. Well done, nephew. Chase Thomas podcast. Hell yeah.